So you're interested in getting a new character in order to get strong perks, but which one should you choose? Let's take a look at the best options for killers you can get based around their strongest perks. And one of the best characters to purchase for starters is the clown. Not only is he one of the easiest killers to use in the game, he also has two really fantastic perks that are amazing on most killer builds. Pop Goes the Weasel is one of the best regression perks in Dead by Daylight, as it will allow you to slow down generators after hooking a survivor, and it's especially great for very aggressive killers that can get a lot of hooks fast. Bamboozle is another fantastic perk that will block any windows after you vault them, and this perk is especially great on characters like Hillbilly or Leatherface, but I use it on other characters like Singularity, Sadako, School Merchant and even more. His third perk is Coldrophobia, a perk that helps with slowing down the healing of survivors, and it can be devastating against new players, but Sloppy Butcher is just way better for that purpose. Another really great choice for beginners is the Plague, one of the most unique killers in the game, as she has Corrupt Intervention. This is one of the best perks in the entire game, and also a must pick for setup characters like the Trapper or the Hag. This perk will block the furthest generators from you for 2 minutes at the start of the match, which will help you dramatically in the early game, but it will deactivate once you down a survivor. Infectious Fright is a great choice for characters that have temporal power states like Michael Myers, the Oni and the Plague, as it will make any survivors inside your terror radius scream once you down someone, which can lead you to snowballing the entire match. The Plague's final perk is Dark Devotion, which can be funny as it will transfer your terror radius to the obsession once they get injured, but it's a niche perk and it's not meta at all. A character I don't see recommended much is the Deathslinger, when I personally think that he is a fun character to use and also comes with two nice perks. Deadman Switch is a different type of slowdown that activates once you hook a survivor, and any survivor that stops repairing while this perk is active will block that generator for the rest of the duration of the perk. It's honestly a great way to stall and reward you for hooking survivors. DMS is a great perk to combine with others that will appear further in the video. Another perk of his is Gearhead, which activates after injuring a survivor, and it will reveal the aura of any survivor working on gens that hits a skill check for 8 seconds. Again, it's not a game winning perk, but it can be fun on characters that have great mobility like the Nurse, Hillbilly, Xenomorph or Singularity, and I personally think that this perk is underrated. His final perk is Hex Retribution, and it can be fun to use in a Hex build, but there are just better Hexes out there. And talking about Hexes, not only is the Blight one of the strongest characters in Dead by Daylight, he also has one amazing Hex perk and another one that is not that bad. Hex Undying is a staple perk for any Hex builds you want to make, as it will work as an insurance for your Hexes as they will be transferred to Undying once a survivor breaks it. And if you don't have any hexes to use, you can combine it with Hex Blood Favor, his second great perk that will block all pallets within 32 meters of that survivor once you hit them. And against beginners, this perk can be brutal. If you're a fan of hex builds, Hex Undying is a must use. As for his third perk, Dragon's Grip, it's not that good honestly, as it has a very long cooldown for the effect it does. I would recommend just sticking to the hexes he has. If you want a free perk that you can use on any build, on any killer, then No Way Out might be one of the strongest out of all of them. This perk will block the exit gate switches for 12 seconds at base, and 12 seconds extra for each unique survivor hooked, which can give you a maximum of 1 minute extra in the endgame. It's basically like having a 6 generator in the end. You can use No Way Out on anyone and you will still get value, because even if you are suffering from success and you sacrifice all the 3 survivors before all generators are done, if you find the hatch first, you are guaranteed to know the location of the last survivor, as this perk will activate the moment they touch the exit gates. If you don't know what perks to use, you can just pick no way out and you will always get value out of it, and the best part is that his other perks are not that bad. Starstruck will expose all survivors inside your terror reduce while you're carrying a survivor, 
which will prevent them from body blocking around hooks, which can be very annoying if you just started playing DVD and you don't know how to counter it. And Hex Crowd Control is similar to Hex Blood Favor, but it will block windows for 60 seconds after a survivor vaults them. It can be very devastating, but something even more devastating is you not liking this video if you're finding it useful. So hey, you know what to do. Going back to the vid, if we're talking purely on how strong the perks are individually, then the artist wins by a landslide. Scorch Hook, Pain Resonance, is the strongest gen regression perk in the game, as it will remove 25% of the progress of the most repaired generator for each unique survivor you hook on a Scorch Hook, which are 4 special hooks that will replace normal hooks around the map. Combine this with the before mentioned Dead Man Switch, and you will force survivors to leave the gen and activate the effects of DMS instantly, as it will make them scream. This will give you information on what gen has the most progress, and it will block them for 30 seconds. And the artist also has Hex Pentimento, which is a very nasty perk that works in a very curious way. For each totem the survivors break, you will be able to rekindle that broken totem in order to give survivors dramatic penalties, like making them repair slower, heal slower, and in the worst case scenario with 5 stacks, have those penalties permanently. Her final perk is Grim Embrace, and while this perk has potential, I don't think it's a good perk overall, but I feel like it might get a buff in the future, so having it unlocked is not a bad idea. If you don't have any funds in order to purchase a licensed killer, but you want an amazing tracking perk, then worry not, because you have a fantastic alternative that is free, nowhere to hide. This is by far the best free aura reading perk in the entire game, as it will activate each time you break a generator, revealing the auras of any survivors hiding near you. This perk will almost always give you value, as a lot of survivors try to hide near almost completed gens in order to start repairing them once you leave. And with nowhere to hide, you will know if those pesky survivors are hiding or not. It is also really strong when you hook a survivor near a generator, as you can kick it, activate the perk, and see if there are any survivors that are waiting to rescue the hook survivor. If you're looking for an amazing, and most importantly, free aura beating perk, look no further than nowhere to hide. Knight also has Hex Face the Darkness, which is an interesting perk that will activate once you injure a survivor, cursing them, and it will make all other survivors scream every 25 seconds if they are outside your terror radius. This perk can be fun, especially on stealth killers that injure a lot, like for example the Wraith. And his final perk is Hubris, a perk that will give you the exposed status effect to anyone stunning you, and it can be a very fun perk, but it makes survivors just play safer. Now these are my recommendations for free characters that you can get by grinding, but if you have money in order to purchase a licensed character, then my recommendations are The Cenobite has Deadlock, and this is by far the best perk in Dead by Daylight simply because no matter what you do, it will give you guaranteed value. Deadlock will block the most repair gen for 30 seconds after a generator is repaired, which helps with stalling the game and can be devastating in some scenarios. And you have to do absolutely nothing, unlike the rest of the perks. Deadlock is a fantastic choice no matter what build you're running, just like No Way Out, which is why the Cenobite is the best licensed character to purchase if you're only interested on strong perks. The best part is that Hex Plaything is also not a bad bonus, as it will create a totem each time you hook a survivor, and as long as that totem is active, that survivor will have the Oblivious status effect. If you combine this with Hex Pentimento, the perk from the artist, then you are giving survivors a secondary objective that can help you stall the game even further. And his final perk is Gift of Pain, a Scourge Hook perk that will give survivors the effect of Mangled and Hemorrhage, and when they heal, it makes survivors repair slower. It's not a bad perk, but also not extraordinary. The Nemesis is the owner of Lethal Pursuer, and this is by far my favorite perk from the entire video and the best aura reading perk ever made. The reason as to why is pretty simple. First of all, 
this perk will reveal the location of survivors at the start of the game. So if you are an aggressive killer, you can use this instead of corrupt intervention. The special part is the secondary effect, which will give you an extra 2 seconds to every single aura reading add-on or perk you're using, giving you a lot of potential builds focused on aura reading. If you're a massive fan of aura reading perks on characters like the Huntress, the Nurse or the Blight, then you need Lethal Pursuer. Nemesis also has Eruption, which was a meta perk in the past and even if it's nerfed now, it's not that bad. And it also combines really well with Lethal Pursuer. Nemesis' third perk is Hysteria, and outside of niche stealth builds, I do not recommend it. Now let me tell you, a lot of survivors nowadays run Distortion, which is a perk that will hide their aura every time you see them with a perk, which is a very big counter to Lethal Pursuer, Nowhere to Hide, and any other aura reading perk. Survivors also use Windows of Opportunity a lot, which is a perk that will reveal pallets and vault locations to survivors at all times. Well, Ultimate Weapon, a perk from the Xenomorph, kills two birds with one stone, as it's the best tracking perk behavior has ever made. Not only will it make all survivors inside your terror radius scream after you open a locker, it will also give them the blindness status effect, which will counter windows of opportunity. So if you are a beginner player, and the thing that bothers you the most is survivors hiding, by using ultimate weapon you can find survivors no matter where they are. And that's not all, a xenomorph also has rapid brutality, which is an interesting perk to run on killers that can slow down, like the Cenobite, the Clown and Singularity, as it will make you unable to get bloodlust, but each time you injure a survivor, you get a speed boost of 5%. Its final perk, Alien Instinct, is not that bad to be completely fair, and you could use it in the beginning if you don't have a lot of perks, but there are just way better alternatives especially since you get ultimate weapon already in order to track survivors for free. And as an honorable mention, I would like to recommend Sadako as last. Even though in the past she used to have one of the strongest perks in the meta, Call of Brine, this perk is now very mediocre. Instead, if you are a beginner and you're playing against novices, Sadako has a great perk called Merciless Storm, which will take survivors off guard as it will create a bunch of constant skill checks when a generator is at 90% and if a survivor fails them, it will punish them hard. Floods of Rage is another very great perk to use when combined with Lethal Pursuer and Pain Resonance, as it will give you global aura reading every time a survivor is saved off the hook. And on the plus side, Sadako is a really easy character to use. In any case, if you're still unsure on who to get next, I believe my guide explaining all killer powers can be very useful for you, so check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.